Hi, you guys. Welcome to another episode of First Impression Friday. I uh, came on here expecting for a lot of the big four to have their winter collections out, but only Simplicity has released theirs so far. So I don't know what these guys are waiting for, but um, winter is, we're in the thick of it. So um, we're going to look at these winter patterns as the other um, companies, you know, McCall's, Vogue, Butterick, all of them start to release their winter collections. I'll be back um, to review those. But without further ado, let's jump into this. If it's your first time watching First Impression Friday, welcome. I'm going to go through all of the patterns in the new release and just chat about them. It's kind of like looking through the catalog with one of your sewing besties. So first up, we have a coat and jacket, which to be expected um, to have some outerwear in the winter collection, right? This one is a lined coat and jacket, and it features an attached scarf and has button front closure and pockets. I don't know why Honey is so upset today. Um, the coat comes in two lengths, and now Biscuit's joining in. My goodness. Hold on one second. All right, we're back. Uh, let's take a closer look at the pattern. So you can see here it is your kind of traditional knee length coat, right? I think there might be a bus dart, um, but that's really it in terms of shaping. It's really kind of just an A-line coat. Um, mm, I don't think it's intended to be, well, maybe it is a little bit off the shoulder. It is on her, but it looks like the sleeve cap is a little bit full for a coat that's shoulder width is so long. You know what I mean? Like normally there wouldn't, like you know how a sleeve has like a bell shape to it? This one wouldn't be flatter, but it's not. It looks like a normal sleeve. You can see it here too. So I can't tell if this needs to be flatter or this needs to be shorter. One of the two needs to happen though. Um, and then it's really, it's collarless uh, and just has this attached scarf to it. So I gotta imagine it's pretty simple to sew. Um, maybe you can use this as an opportunity to try a coat lining for the first time since the rest of it is pretty simple. Um, you know, you can really focus on something like a new skill that you haven't tried before. The attached scarf thing is also kind of cool. I guess you probably would want to be a little bit careful which fabric you chose though. So it's not like itchy on your neck. And then there's a shorter version. And then here's the back. Beautiful. That fabric is so fun for a coat, right? All right. And then we have... The back of the envelope, this is really small and it's as big as I can make it. So we're going to do our best here. But it says lightweight wools, denims, boiled wool, fleece, and linen. Interesting. And lining fabric. And then lightweight fusible interfacing. Also a pair of shoulder pads and buttons. And then... Finish garment measurement wise, comparing it against the ease. It's a pretty roomy coat all around. The uh, bust has like, what would that be? Six, mm, seven inches of ease. And then the waist has more than 10. And the hip has, what is that? Six or so? So yeah, you don't have to worry about fit really on this one because it is so... Um, kind of A-line and roomy. All right, next up we have... Okay, so this is the same version as this. It's just in the women's um, category. So extended sizing here on this coat. This one comes in 20 to 38. And I think the other one was probably like... 8 to 20 or something, 8 to 18 maybe. So we get to see another version of it. This one is, it comes in two lengths. So this is actually, this is so interesting. This is actually the same length as the last one but because this woman is petite and she's shorter. It's coming to mid-calf versus her knee. I, I have mixed feelings about that. I kind of feel like if it's meant to be a knee length coat, then they should have altered this to be knee length on her. But at the same time, I think it's nice to show the length of the pattern as is on multiple different heights. 
so that you can visualize yourself as her, you know what I mean? And how long the jacket would be if you made it as is. I don't know, two sides of the same coin there probably, but um, if it were me and I were designing a collection, I would probably have altered it. But that's just me. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to get a lot of the same sort of pictures and illustrations here. This one also comes with a vent. Did the last one, I don't feel like I noticed that. Um, and I also feel like the sleeve on this one is a lot better. You can tell she has just a more dramatic shoulder slope. Um, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But again, fits her beautifully, just like the last model. And then the uh, uh, ease in the pattern should be similar. We've got 8 inches in the bust. Um, again, more than 10 in the waist and six in the hip. So maybe a little bit less, but still pretty roomy all around. Um, you should be able to make your regular size and be good to go. Um, also fabric wise, it looks like, yeah, five-ish yards, depending on which view you make. Now, wait a minute. It says jacket comes in two lengths, but then there's three lengths here. So maybe she's wearing view A. Why do they make this so complicated? Okay, that is view A, but look at this. Coat comes in two lengths. No, it comes in three lengths and she has the longest. So everything that I said earlier about this needing to be knee length is incorrect. <laughs> This is the longer, the longest of the three links. This is just a typo here. So annoying, right? It's like I have to go back and check their work every single time because they make these small little errors. And not that that's like a huge deal, two links versus three links, but I do like to know what I'm looking at. Um, the next one is a dress with sleeve and link variations designed for the American Sewing Guild. I have quite a few of their patterns. I can't remember if the instructions are any different for them or not. Um, it says dress features knotted draped bodice overlay, cut out neckline, waistband at skirt encased into side seam and back zipper. View A is long with pleated puff sleeves and sleeve bands. Views B and C have flutter sleeves. View C is a mini dress. Sales from this pattern help support the ASG. All right, so that's what it's all about. Um, all right, so we have, doesn't this look a lot like that white shirt? Oh man, when, what, when, I didn't remember, I don't know if it was Simplicity, it might have been McCall's. Who remembers that from summer or fall? It was recent. It was like a white poplin and it had this same thing, maybe a little bit lower, but it was very similar. So, that's interesting just to have like a similar bodice, but they um, made this one into like an overlay. So like this piece here is separate from your bodice. And then you have a waistband and we haven't seen dedicated waistbands in a minute. Um, and then you've got this kind of like drapey skirt, which on her doesn't look like it's draping at all, but all three of these do. Um, and then view A has the same sort of like, you know, raglan sleeve, but with a band and then B and C just kind of let it loose. So it's kind of like a shawl and dress combined into one. That's kind of fun, right? But yeah, this detail for sure, we just saw in a shirt form. Here's the back, center back zip. Everything looks like it should. And this one recommends silky types, double Georgette, uh, satin back crepe, um, soft cottons. I'd like to know, well, I guess, yeah, I was going to say, I'd like to know if um, you could make the dress without the um, overlay, but I think no, because it's like the sleeve, it's not an overlay in the back. All right, six to 24 on the sizing on this one. Uh, roughly three-ish yards of fabric for the largest size. 
fit wise, it looks to be pretty close fitting in the bust, very close fitting in the waist, and close fitting in the hip. So definitely one of those things where you're going to want to make sure to, you know, double check, especially if you're in between sizes, confirm that the ease is comfortable for you um, so that you end up getting a dress that fits you like you like. Also, of course, the vertical measurements on this one are going to be really important too because you want that waist seam to sit exactly at your true waist. Interesting though, right? All right. Now we have another dress with sleeve and length variations. Dresses have gathers at neckline and raglan sleeves with variation for, sleeve, for seam openings that tie close at neck. In the back maybe? Gathers are created at waist with two rows of elastic casing. All feature tiered skirts, two lengths, center back keyhole opening. View A has long sleeves with elastic gathers at the wrist. View B and C have flutter sleeves. So another raglan flutter sleeve dress, similar to the last one, but without the overlay, without the little detail here. And then this is two rows of elastic, a little bit on top, a little bit on bottom, and everything in the middle is like ruched in between those. And then your tiers. The tiers on this one are interesting because there's one at the high hip and that's it. Um, you normally, you know, we would see two or three more, but you have your sleeve gathered with elastic. So kind of like shirring, but not really. Oh, and this is the cutout detail that they're talking about. Well, why didn't they make that version? That version's really cute. Um, and this is also like not wintry to me. Even like the illustrations fabric is very springy. Look at this one. I mean, that's like full on summer colors. Again, why didn't they make the long sleeve version? I don't know. For winter, wouldn't you? I mean, I guess they did put her in tights, but, <laughs> but yeah, odd, right? Yeah, I don't, the proportions of this one are kind of throwing me off. I think it's because of the tier. Like there's gathers, 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 and then nothing. I think I just wish there were one more tier here, but maybe that would have like made the fabric requirements, you know, complicated or cutting layouts complicated. I don't know. But I do like the version with the um, cutouts here. Not in love with the fact that they tie right here though and create those two little itty bitty bows. That feels a little fussy to me, um, but this is cool. Right? Don't you think that's like, I wish it didn't tie. Um, there's got to be a way to close that without doing the tie. Maybe even, I mean, worst case scenario, like a covered button with um, an elastic loop would be better than that. The bows just feel like a lot. And you know me, I love a bow. <laughs> so here is the back keyhole opening with hook and eye. Yeah, this feels a little also long in the waist on her. Plus, it also feels like, do you see this little like bubble here? So this elastic is trying to ride up on her hip, creating this little bubble. And I don't really know how you'd get around that other than shortening all of this so that the center of this band is at her natural waist. Right now, the top of the band is at her natural waist. So just raising it an inch or so, I think would have helped. All right, here's the back. Charmeuse, cotton blends, crepe de chine, rayon, silky types, viscose. Again, all summery spring fabrics. <sighs> okay, um, so eight to 26 on the size range for this one. Um, three, four yards, depending on the length that you choose and the sleeve, obviously. And then they're only giving us finished garment measurements for the bust, which I understand we don't need the hip and the waist, maybe because it's really taken in with the elastic, it's a little bit flexible, but there's nine inches of ease in the bust. So 
you know, plenty there. Okay. And I kind of thought they were going to have a women's version of that too, but they don't. All right, we're already at the vintage dresses, which I struggle with this because most of the time the words in here, I don't know what they mean um, because I, I'm just not well versed in vintage terminology, I guess. Um, this is from the 1950s. Two-piece dressing begins with slim mid-calf length skirt with center front pleat. The jacket features a pointed collar, front laps over side front sections, forming pockets at the lower edge. That's interesting. Options include buttonhole pockets with saddle stitching, three quarter sleeves with turned back cuffs, or short sleeves with rolled back cuffs. Wear as a suit with matching fabric head to toe or as a separate jacket and skirt with contrasting fabrics which is what they've illustrated here. This is the little pocket detail that they're talking about. Well, I mean, first of all, there's actually a lot to take in here that they didn't mention. So we've got this pointed collar, but then we've also got this separate collar here with a ginormous, um, oh gosh, what kind of buttonhole is that? Um, like It's like a welt, but without the pocket. Oh man, the word is escaping me. You know what I'm talking about. The buttonholes. Oh my gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, we have a bust dart underneath this little flap and then this flap comes down and this becomes a pocket. See how her hands are in here? And then you've also got fisheye darts here. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to take in with that. And then here's the front pleat on the skirt. Here's the turned back cuff for the sleeve options. So interesting. Are we going to get to see the back? The back just has the fisheye darts in the jacket and then shoulder darts too. Um, the vintage patterns are always so interesting. Like construction wise, we don't really like see stuff like this anymore. Um, here is a two piece dress, collar, cuffs, and dicky, horseshoe neckline fashions the bodice, full pleated skirt conceals two pockets. Dickie has ribbon, bow tie, and buttons. Dress B, which is featured in border stripe fabric, has bestie for modesty. Okay, I think I know what those are using context clues. This is a bestie. Now, the difference between a bestie and a Dickie, I'm not sure about. Is the bestie sewn in? Is it attached? The dicky is not. I know that for sure, but I don't know what a bestie is. So my vintage girlies, you guys are always so helpful on these videos, chiming in where I just fall short. Um, if you know anything about a bestie, let me know. But otherwise, it has this, you know, kind of like drop shoulder situation. This is the horseshoe collar, which I never knew it was called that. What's the difference between a horseshoe collar and a Peter Pan collar? Is it just that Peter Pan's higher and horseshoe is lower? So Peter Pan is more round and horseshoe is more of an oval. Um, we have these vertical darts here into this, like, it kind of looks like a vest, really, um, with its little notch cut out. And then we've got the skirt and then pockets in the skirt, but I don't think that that's the side seam. So yeah, and so yeah, you can make it into two different. This would be, you know who I can picture wearing something like this? Do you guys know who Janelle Monet is? She has such an interesting style. Like, I don't know that I could show up in sort of like a tuxedo type dress, but it would be quite a statement maker. It'd be very interesting. Here's the backs. So here's the dicky, right, that ties at the sides. There's no separate piece for the vestie, so I'm going to assume that it's sewn in. Um, and then it, the, as far as construction of the back, we really just have the vertical darts here and then just like a gajillion more pleats in the skirt. This says that dress A for the top alone is three and something yards. Wow. Dress B, cut crosswise 
is also just three yards, but again, you're cutting it crosswise. So um, pretty close fitting, right? Yeah, three inches of ease just roughly in the bust, and then we're not getting any waist or hip measurements. All right. Now we have, oh, this is kind of cool. I've been seeing a lot of these types of tops with the asymmetrical cutout, but that have a turtleneck attached to it. Um, out of also knit, yeah. So knit tops have asymmetric cutout along shoulder for a sleek silhouette look. Top features long gathered sleeves with bands, long straight sleeves, and sleeveless option. So yeah, they use some kind of like rib or sweater knit. I'd love to know, is this just turned under? Or is there kind of like a facing in here? Or like, how is this finished? I'm curious to know that. But you can also see here that there's actually a seam that comes through here. And also, in this version anyways, where the shoulder is filled in, there's like a little pleat um, and then kind of like a fuller sleeve with a band. So for this one, you'd want something kind of lightweight and drapey. This one you can use just about any knit. And then this is what she's wearing. Yeah, a little bit more stable on this one, probably stable, but still stretchy. This one, I think also has the shoulder cut out, right? Isn't that where your shoulder goes? No, your arm comes out here. So I guess this sits on the top point of your shoulder. Like, he, yeah, 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 yeah. You can see the seam here, actually. Interesting, the construction on this one would be a lot of fun, piecing it all together. And I like the cutout version. You know, I don't love asymmetrical stuff, right? We've talked about that in the past, but this feels... I don't know, not like that. I guess I don't like the ones where it comes underneath the armpit. So the fact, I don't know, this one just feels like you would find this at like White House Black Market or something for like $80. Um, we could probably make it for 10. Yeah, this one's fun. Also would be really easy to turn, especially this view, into a um, bodysuit. And maybe not even need snaps on the bottom, but you could certainly add them. I'm not the biggest fan of all of this drape here. I feel like it could be a little closer fitting. Like in the front, it feels very close fitting, right? But in the back, it seems like the the back panels are a little bit wide. I don't know. And also, this is not staying up without fashion tape. They have something here. This would for sure be falling down. So now that I'm looking at it that way, yeah, I guess, you know, it probably is a little bit tricky to fit this because this has to be tight to create the resistance, especially if they don't have any elastic in here. I'll look at the notions and see if they have it done kind of like where, you know how swimsuits are done? Kind of like that. But like all of this and this, I'm not liking any of that. I want it to be like skin tight <laughs> like the sleeve is I guess okay here's the back so stretch knits like cotton knits interlock jersey sweater knits bamboo rayon knit and no notions so yeah for the off the shoulder one I would either be doing that little trick with the quarter inch elastic or just I mean really fitting it and making sure that you keep removing from this arm seam here until there's enough tension on this to keep it up on your arm. All right. And then, yeah, three inches of ease in the bust and then six in the waist. That is a lot. Um, so yeah, I would probably size down and maybe that would fix this problem too. I might grab this one and play around with the fit and see, see what it's like. Of course, I will let you guys know. Um, but it is a cool shirt, right? Okay, then we have the women's version of this. I literally just bought fabric to make a accordion skirt. Um, I did a, I filmed a haul, so I'll post that here shortly. But look, I can make like a whole little cute outfit, especially if I were able to find a knit that had like 
a subtle sparkle to it that could be so pretty for the holidays. Even for New Year's, like I'm not somebody that goes out on New Year's. Like I, it's one of the, I don't know, I'm weird about holidays that center around drinking. <laughs> I get really nervous about other people's responsibility and I take it on myself to keep myself safe because I don't feel like I can trust everybody else. So if I do anything for New Year's, it's usually like I'm home by like eight <laughs> and I just watch the ball drop <laughs> from the safety of my own home where I don't have to drive or even like get a ride. Like I don't want to be on the roads on New Year's. Anyways, that's a lot of information to just explain that I probably don't need something super fancy if I'm just going to go to dinner and then skip out. You know what I mean? But yeah, so women's version is available. Super cute, right? This is the version that has the shoulder attached to it. This, again, I'm not convinced that they didn't use some kind of fashion tape to keep that up on her shoulder. Right? That's the version she's wearing. So in theory, you have a little bit of a shoulder seam there. But because as we, as, as we pointed out in the jacket, right? I think it was the same model that was wearing the jacket. Um, she has a dramatic shoulder slope. Either, well, I don't know how you want to look at it, either a short shoulder width or a very dramatic shoulder slope. I can't see her whole body, so it's hard to tell. But this, I don't know how this is staying up, right? I mean, gravity does its thing <laughs> no matter what. So I'm sure they're having to put some stay tape or some, I'm sorry, fashion tape in there to keep that up. A little misleading, a little, you know, if you're not thinking about something like that, you might go to make this and then realize this whole thing would fall down. This would become like a big giant opening, right? Or is it, well, let's see the back. No, yeah, that would fall off. That would fall off for sure. Um, so depending on the shape of your shoulder, this is definitely something to consider. Again, you're either going to want to put a little piece of elastic in here just to create that tension um, or just know that you're going to need some, some kind of state tape. If it were me and I were making this for her, I probably would reduce the width here, maybe even here and try and get this cut out up here. That would, that's the only other thing I can think of to do. Um, but I didn't even notice that that one had these little tucks here in the sleeve cap too, which is really cute. All right, and then same back envelope. Cute top. Okay, now we have a women's, or sorry, Mrs. and women's jacket with tie belt. So this is Mrs. and women's together in one pattern. Yeah, 10 to 18, I'm sorry, not in one pattern, but in one listing. Um, 10 to 18, 20 to 28, and 30 to 38. Don't ask me why they don't do this for all of them. I don't know why there's two separate listings for Mrs. and Women's on the other two patterns we've seen. I I, I cannot explain that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm not in their brain. It doesn't make sense to me either. But for whatever reason, sometimes it's that way and sometimes it's this way. Um, this one says, add instant polish to any outfit. Jacket features a belt, shoulder pads, lining, front flat pockets, and front buttons. View A has slit on sleeves, which is super popular right now. I'm seeing this sleeve detail in everything from gowns to jackets to tops, like literally anything with a sleeve, I'm seeing this detail. Um, view B has contrast collar, lapel tie, and pocket flaps. Complete the look with matching vest and pants, which is a whole separate uh, pattern number. So again, that's another really, that's different. I don't see this very often where they have an entire outfit and don't put all the pieces into one pattern. So this one, you buy the jacket and the pants separately. That's, I feel like that's a very divisive decision, right? I mean, some people are going to be like, no, 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 no. In these other patterns, we've always gotten the jacket and pants together. Why now are you all of a sudden skimping on us and making us buy two separate patterns to get the entire suit? Would love to know you guys' thought on that. 
leave a comment in the comment section below. Is this okay with you? Do you prefer this? Or are you like, no, 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 you guys are just trying to get more money out of us now. <laughs> like, like we see the writing on the wall. Let me know what you think. I, it's a really bold choice for them to make at this point in the game, right? Um, but looking at the jacket only, because that's the only thing that's for sale with this one. We'll look at the pants and vest so shortly, I assume. Very basic, traditional, blazer-esque um, jacket with the notched collar. Um, and then it has this like, you know, tie belt, which yeah, I don't know about that. Um, it feels like a really sloppy way to give shape, um, versus putting the shape into these princess seams that are already there. Um, uh, it feels like a cheater, like they cheated to give her this shape. They could have given her this shape with those darts, but they didn't want to spend that much time on fitting or something, you know? Um, so we have the princess seams that come down underneath the pockets. These are welt pockets with flaps, but the real star of this that makes it special really is the sleeve slit. Like I said, I'm seeing this absolutely everywhere. Um, so there are some fit issues with this jacket. It's a little bit hard to tell if it's from the belt, do you see this one here? This is what I'm talking about. It doesn't look too small in the bicep, which is what this is telling me is happening. So I'm thinking what's happening is it's an, it's an arm side issue, specifically the underarm. And if it's being pulled in with this thing, then that might be even trying to pull it down even more. And it's just creating like a weird kind of tension through this area. That would be my guess. Cause it's something that's happening over here too. Um, so I wonder if they take a picture of her without the belt on. That color is so pretty. This is the contrast one. Again, very springy. Oh my God. I cannot wait to get to the pants. This outfit. Oh, yeah. Really cute. Okay. Here's the back. Let's see if the back tells us anything more about this sleeve fit. So there are, it's a two piece sleeve. Yeah. I can't really tell what's happening. Cause here, it, is it even tied? That doesn't look like that at all. So I don't know. I feel like they they take such creative liberty with these photos. I don't think the belt is tied here. Um, which, okay, that's, uh, but, but also like, no, I want to know how it fits in the back. I don't know. And also like, where did her hand go? The sleeves did not seem too long. I don't know. They are going past her like top knuckles. So maybe they are a little bit long on her and that would cause her hand to completely <laughs> disappear. Um, I think this pattern will do well. I think that, you know, you could make a version that you love. Um, you're just going to have to pay attention to a few little details um, to make sure that the fit is better. Not that it needs to be perfect, just better than what they were able to achieve on the fit model. Um, cotton blends, gabardine, linen blends, stretch wovens, twill, lightweight wool blends. Yeah, all your suiting fabrics. And then lining fabrics, fusible. No notions. That's interesting. There's not even a shoulder pad. Oh, wait. Oh, shoulder pads. Okay, one pair of shoulder pads and, bu excuse me, buttons. And then just a couple yards for the jacket. And then... 10 inches of ease in the bust, 10 in the waist, and 10 in the hip. That feels like a lot to me. And maybe that's part of the issue. Something to think about for sure. Okay, so now are these going to be the pants and the vest? Nope. Let's see. Oh, we got to go all the way down here. These are them. So we'll, oh my God, that is so cute. Okay. We'll get there eventually. Um, 
This is a Mrs. and Women's in one pattern pullover top. I'm sorry, in one listing. I can't keep saying one pattern. Um, 10 to 18 and then 20 to 28 on the sizing. Trendy. I don't know about that. Trendy pullover tops can dress up any outfit. View A and B have pointed collar and shirt tail hem with different sleeve options. View C and D have stand collar and puff sleeves. View C has elastic at sleeves. Okay. What are these? No. No. Mm, okay, 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 okay. Okay, clearing my mind so that I can be as unobjective, as objective as possible. We've basically got a tunic, right? This is nothing new. They These patterns have existed for decades. This is a tunic with a collar or just a collar stand. You have the V facing with the top stitching on it, drop shoulder, and your sleeve. It's mid hip length and then you've got these ties which it looks like in some versions they're actually tying. Oh no. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to like, I think the pleather is one of the better choices they could have chose for a sample of this, but it still feels something. I don't know. This is just not, not my jam, I guess. But here's this tied. This has, you know, shorter in the front than the back. And then it also has these sleeve vents with little, I don't know if those are buttons or what. This, I think, is the same version as the last one, but a different sleeve. This, to me, is the most modern, trendy version, yet kind of a little bit more of like a 70s peasant vibe. And then that's the same with a different sleeve, yeah. Just without the elastic on the sleeve and replacing it with a cuff. Oh, man, I want to like it. And I can... Oh, it's hard because, to me, they took an old pattern and was like, you know what, we should just make this out of pleather and it'll feel new and fresh. But I'm not getting new or fresh in spite of that. You have a yoke in the back. Her hair's really pretty. Yeah, it's just feeling a little bit vintage in all the wrong ways. I don't know. Not a fan. Not a fan. Cottons, poplin, sateen, linens, faux suede or leather, lightweight denim, silky types. I get, I, I guess I kind of get where they were trying to go with the faux leather. Maybe it's the color. I don't know. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what's happening, but you need a lot of it. Two yards? Man, that's a lot. Well, I guess with a sleeve. And then 11 inches of ease in the bust, which, you know, that's fine. It's supposed to be a loose fitting pullover top. That's totally reasonable. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not getting... I guess I can't picture who would wear this and where you would wear it to other than just you know, to Target, which, you know, that's fine too. You have to wear something to Target. Can't go naked. Okay. We have a hooded coat and jacket with link variations. Easy to sew coats and jacket have relaxed fit. Hooded coats and jacket feature one button closure, side seam pockets, and come in link variations. Okay. Oh, okay. You know what? I kind of am here for a design like this. Simply for like those times when you need to like just throw on something kind of like at a, like at your kid's baseball game or something. You know what I mean? You just want to throw something on really quick. Um, Almost like a blanket, like you're wearing a blanket that has some design features to it. That's kind of what I'm getting, which I think is kind of cool. 
I can't see a single design line. Okay, here we go. Raglan sleeve. Him here, him here. All of this is turned under. That might be it. The short one in a really fun fabric could be really cute. You could even make it like a rain. It's kind of like a poncho and a cape had a baby. So what would that be? A concho? <laughs> oh gosh. I think that looks kind of cool. Am I losing it? I don't know. Maybe the last one threw me off so much that now I'm just like, my mind is open. But it has like, it feels like really comfortable. I don't know. I think it's cool. Okay, so foiled wool, ponty, sweater knits, wool, nylon ripstop, which is kind of what I was um, hinting at with the waterproofedness of it all. Uh, fleece would be a good option. Wrong side of fabric will show on hood and front so most of these actually are going to look the same front to back so that shouldn't be a problem but just be careful if you're going to use a fabric that isn't listed here and it looks different wrong side to right side you will see that and then you just need one button um two or three yards of fabric that's not bad and then yeah plenty roomy everywhere so I don't know. I think, I think it's kind of cool. I wanted to see, they stopped putting the um, line drawings up there. I wanted to see this to see if it helped with the style lines. I'm not, yeah, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's a single dart, nothing. It's just got those raglan sleeves and that's it. Gosh, I'd love to know what the pattern pieces look like. Is the hood sewn in? Like all these details, I don't know. Is the hood like grown on or is it you sew it in separately? I'm not sure. Okay, now we have this unisex jacket, vest, and belt. Easy to sew jacket and vest feature shawl collar, front button closure, and pockets. They all are lined. View C and D are cropped. Okay, I'm especially loving this version. A man in a shawl cardigan as a coat. I'm not sure for me. <laughs> if Dan showed up in this, I'd be like, where are your clothes? Like, why are you wearing a robe? Even this one in like, you know, the more masculine type of plaid. I guess maybe this whole thing is still reading very feminine to me. I've got no good reason for that. That's, I don't know why. That's just what's, I don't know. <laughs> I wanted to like it on him, but it, yeah, it just feels like he's got, like Hugh Hefner. It feels like he's trying to be like, you know what I mean? I don't know. But on her, especially with this little Sherling situation, Maybe his had the shirling? I don't know. Um, I think that's pretty cool. And it is like um, a Pendleton wool-esque type of fabric. I think there's lots of really fun options. This is giving me 70s in all the right ways. I'm loving that. Um, and even the vest, I think, is kind of neat out of the right fabric. Fully lined. Like, these are, these are nice. They don't look like much, but construction-wise, it's pretty involved yeah her outfit head to toe I would wear but yeah something's not right here right am, am I the only one is there anybody out there that's like no yeah my, I really want my husband to wear that okay these are the illustrations there's a cropped version there's the sleeveless version yeah super cool well, that looks better, I guess. Maybe it's a man in a belted. Is that it? Because it's belted? Like if you didn't have the belt? Maybe that's it. 
I don't know. Still don't know. Um, corduroy, cotton blends, denim, stretch wovens, twill, wool blends, fleece, and Sherpa. And then A has the contrast Sherpa. So they, you know, explain how to do that and how to cut that. And then also lining. So the Sherpa is not, the Sherpa is not the lining, if that makes sense. Um, two buttons, one or two buttons. Um, and because it's unisex, you get like these different looking um, measurements. Uh, again, like two-ish yards of fabric and no finished garment measurements but I'm assuming it's pretty roomy. Yeah, that's cool. That's, I, you know, haven't had a desire to make a jacket in a very long time. I think because all the ones that I have made kind of fit what I need here in Charlotte. We don't need a lot of jackets here. You know what I mean? But that is intriguing. All right. This one is a skirt. Mrs. Flared high waist skirts come in two lengths and feature back zipper, side seam pockets, optional slide buckles or buttons and view a and b have front slit and back dart very chic right this is some kind of pleather i think or at least it's like one of those denims that look like leather um and you have i do like this buckle slide detail that looks very like not homemade um and then we've also got even a flary version so if you're not into the pencil skirt, you could do a little bit more of an A-line situation. You could do the pockets down here. So that's the version she's wearing, just in a print. There is the little cargo-y type of version. Very pretty springtime skirt, right, with the tie. And I think that's the one with the buckles, but you only get one buckle for the short version. Here is the back. This one has nice long darts. I'm going to attribute all of this to the fact that this is just falling down a little bit. I don't think it's really construction that's causing these issues. It's just she's been moving around a lot. Or, I mean, maybe it's too long through the center back. You know, she needs a sway back adjustment, maybe. Um, I also probably would have top stitched this if it were my skirt. Just because it's leather, you, it's, you know, you can't press it, so. Or you can, but not well. Denim, lightweight wools, linen, cotton, faux leather, or suede, or crepe. I wish they would have separated these suggestions into... A, B suggestions, and then C, D suggestions. I mean, technically, I guess you could do them all out of either version. I don't know that I would want a faux leather skirt like this, though. I mean, maybe. Now that I'm saying it out loud, maybe that wouldn't be so bad, actually. Okay, I, I stand corrected. Um, invisible zipper, two slide buckles, two buttons. So for D... D did not have a buckle. That's just like a tab, I guess. Um, 8 to 26 in the size range, 2 yards-ish. One and a half if you make the short version. Actually, less than 2 yards on everything but this. Even C, which you would think because it's so full. Huh. All right, and then it says, please, re please refer to the English guide for garment measurements, which is unhelpful when you're shopping online. Just want to put that back out there again. All right, now look at these. Mrs. Skirt Pants and Short. Okay, this could go either way. Um, versatile skirt, pant, and short feature a shaped crossover waistband, invisible zipper, Side pockets and soft pleats. Views A and C have button trim on waistband. Another faux leather that they're working with. Okay. Call me crazy, but I love these. 
this feels so chic and expensive. Doesn't it look like you would spend hundreds of dollars on these? I am, I love this. It's my favorite pattern of the whole collection so far. You can do a long skirt, a short skirt, and the shorter your skirt, it looks like they don't do the full tabs, just these little baby ones. Then you have the pants and the shorts. And again, the shorts have the little baby crossover, not the big one. I love everything about this. This if the next sale, this is what I'm buying. Am I alone? Am I the only one? <laughs> Am I the only one? I would make all the versions. Look how cool it is in a chambray. And I love how they styled it with the button down here for it. Okay, so the back, we've got our super wide waistband, which I also love that. I love that it's high-waisted. Um, the zipper, there's no dart here. Um, it's releasing to like, and I guess this is just due to the lack of drape and all the structure in a pleather, but it is kind of coming to a point. I don't know how you would fix that, but I think that the curve looks really good. The center is hitting at the center. The length is okay, considering she's a fit model and probably taller than the average person. I love it. I probably wouldn't go through the trouble of using faux leather for it, but I can think of a gajillion other fabrics. They recommend lightweight wools. How amazing would it be in like a suiting wool, something that looks like it would be for a suit, but done in this really cool, interesting way. I love a juxtaposition like that. Um, poplin, a million percent. Sateen, of course. Crepe would give it that like really drapey look. Denim, linen, faux leather. And a little bit of interfacing. You need an invisible zipper and two buttons if you're doing the big crossover. It only goes up to size 22 though. They did the size four versus 24. Um, two yards-ish for all versions. Those, those little fractions I cannot see. The skirt B is one and a half. Um, and then the pants and shorts, two, two, something, two and something there. And then finished garment measurements for the hip is all we're going to get here. And it's three inches of ease in the hip. So close fitting hip, but you can see it has that very dramatic flair. I love this. I love this so much. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like maybe I'm going to be in the minority, but I'm still going to be loud and proud about it. And I'm going to make them. And then you guys will like them too. Or it could be there. You guys have, there have been patterns, as you know, who have been around for a minute that I've loved and that I've made and that you guys have been like, no girl, I don't know what you're thinking, but that's okay. That's what fashion is, right? Okay. So this is the vest and pants that go with the blazer that we saw a few patterns ago. Um, featuring front buttons. This is the vest. It's lined front buttons, mock welt pockets, buckle set in side seams. And then the pants have slits on the front slash pockets, waistband with belt loops and center front seams. Okay. So getting into this lined vest, V neck, lots of buttons. Um, it is a vertical dart, not a princess seam. And then, I don't know what this is. I also don't know why it's going up. So I'm thinking it's too long through here. It needs to be shortened by, gosh, an inch or more. Faux welt pockets. So you just have like the little flap, but your hands cannot actually go in here, which obviously it's not very long. So that makes sense. Itty bitty 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 too small through the bust here. That's why you're getting that little bubble thing, but we have a fly front pant with a center front seam that opens out into this little 
slits. Super cool. I love this kind of like bell bottomy. It's like a loose fitting flare kind of. I love that shape. Looks really good on her too. Not just like straight shaped people. What's the back look like? Okay, cool. So the back also has, the pants also have a vertical seam, which make it so simple to fit the butt and thigh. And well, the cap doesn't really matter on this one because it's so wide down here. But if you have issues with like a full seat um, or thin thighs or whatever it is, these seams make it so easy for you to make those adjustments. You have the little slit here this piece is shorter than this which I guess is on purpose and yeah you can really tell that this is too long on her um by kind of a lot this whole thing needs to be shortened and that would fix whatever they're trying to do with the belt in the front too um, they're not going to show us the waistband which I hate but it is what it is okay so that is as big as it gets that is literally barely legible cotton blends gabardine linen blends stretch wovens twill lightweight wool blends lining fabric and lightweight fusible six buttons one buckle a zipper uh yeah a zipper and an, another button for something 10 to 18 is it for the sizing on this the jacket had misses and women's that this this can't be right um and then I can't read those numbers and finished measurements again 10 inches in the bust 10 in the waist and then the hip for the pants, well, they don't say, well, I guess it has to be for the pants, is also 10 inches? No, that's not right either. So this is, the, the, no, they didn't do all the work on this. Also, yeah, they are not giving you all the measurements. They're only giving you this, which is really unhelpful. If you're in either, obviously, if you're in either one of these categories, it's not helpful at all. Um, and there's no way there's 10 inches of ease in these pants in the hip. No way. So this one, yeah, you really need to get the pattern, go to the store, order the pattern, maybe plan on returning it. I don't know how the return policy is like, but the information that they're providing is a little thin. Okay. Now we have tops and pull on pants cold shoulder top are we doing that again i guess so has scoop neckline with long sleeves top b is short sleeve both pants have knit contrast on waistband jogger pants d have ankle cuff and pin tucks they put this girl in sweatpants and high heels And she seems to like it. Weird. So the sweater, I think, is actually kind of cool. This is the cold shoulder portion that they're talking about. It's not as dramatic as what we saw like five or eight years ago. It's just like a little baby slit kind of. It's actually kind of a take on just a very simple, straightforward, grown-on sleeve pattern. I mean... If you have a pattern that has a grown on sleeve like this, you have a seam going on top of your shoulder, just hem part of it. <laughs> That's all this is, is part of it is left open and you just turn it under and hem it. That is it. Um, this sleeve is a little baby flutter sleeve. The pants, maybe these aren't sweatpants. Maybe that's like some kind of suede. And then just the contrast knit waistband. But that also means that where the pants meet the waistband has to be gathered. Because um, you stretch out, the, you know, you stretch out the waistband, the pants have to stretch too. And if this is not a stretch fabric, that wouldn't happen naturally. I, I'm not mad at the illustrations. I, the, uh, I don't know what it is about 
these pants with, I think I would rather have the little cuff version with the high heels. I don't know how, mm, but at the same time, I don't know how I would style these, maybe with a wedge or something, a boot, I don't know. I don't hate it. It could work. But so, maybe the rise is wrong. Something's off. Let's see if there's where they're supposed to hit. If it's even going to show us that. I'm getting like, you know, one inch or so below the natural waist. Not low rise. Oh, Lord, that's worse. But it looks like the rise is fine through here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Something, something's amiss. Silky types. This is for, this is for, what does that say? <laughs> Suggested fabric. Silky types, satin back crepe, double Georgette, soft cottons, velvet. Is that what it is? Velvet pants? Jersey? Is that for the t all ver A, B, C, and D? Like, I guess so. And then contrast C and D for the waistband. And then also for the ankle band, stretch velvet, rib knit, and jersey. So something stretchy. And then single fold bias tape for the top. Maybe that's how they're finishing um, or hemming that opening. Or also maybe the neckline. I bet that's how the neckline is done. And then... Some amount of one inch wide elastic for your waistband. This feels like it needed to come out in 2010 and then there's like, oh yeah, we did this one a long time ago and never released it. So let's just do it now. Like even these pants, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't on this one. I can't give you a hard yes or hard no. I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm somewhere like I want it to work, but it's just not. Wow, this is our first Mimi G pattern. The one and only this time? I know she's busy. She's got a lot going on nowadays. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're only going to get one pattern. A jacket, poncho, and pants. Anorak style jacket with hood. Features. Front cargo pocket. Half front zipper. Elastic waist cording and elastic at sleeves. View B is a poncho that includes half zip front and snap fasteners under sleeves okay view c are pants with drawstring ties and elasticized cuffs okay so this is what she one of the things that i think she's really good at and that is the streetwear element um really cool always fresh right but at the same time not for everyone so this is the jacket this is the cargo pocket right half zip and then the Anorak style where you have these little cords with cord stoppers and everything like that. For me, the proportions of all of these things together are a little bit not, they're not, it's not off. It's not bad. It's just not for me. Like I like to have either long legs and a short torso or a long torso and short legs. This is like long torso short legs. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not liking how long this is. But it is cool. I don't know. It's it would be really hard for me to show up somewhere and my friends not be like what happened to you? This is just not. This is like the complete opposite of my style. But the more I'm looking at it, especially full view, and she's like not a straight, you know, ruler shape. She's curvy. So it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. Maybe too cool for me. When you throw this little poncho on, so the idea of the poncho is that you have this half zip, which I love she did the contrast zipper. Um, and then under here, under when she lifts her arms, there's just little buttons, little snaps under there. And that's what gives it the arm shape. So all of it together is really cool. Just too cool for me. Styled perfectly, as usual. I'm wondering if I 
didn't make the pants, just the jacket. We'll look at line drawings and see if that is like helping at all. <laughs> um, poplin, denim, cottons, nylons, view B, which is the poncho, pre-quilted fabrics, fleece, boiled wool, and rainwear fabric. View C, which is the pants, you can also do in a knit. You need a ton of notions, everything from those half zippers to the cords to the um, cord stoppers, all of that stuff. Snaps for the poncho, elastic for the pants, everything. Um, 8 to 26 on the size range. Roughly 3 yards for the jacket, 1 and something for the poncho, 2 and something for the pants. And then, yeah, the bust of the poncho and the jacket, very roomy, more than 10 yards, 10 inches of ease. And the hip in the pants only has two inches of ease. Maybe, no, that says 39. Okay, okay. So six inches of ease. That makes more sense. Let's look at the um, line drawings. Yeah, I think it's just the length of the jacket. If this were like chopped off here, I think that I would love it. But it's also one of those things that you have to pull on. You know, it doesn't have a full zip. So like you put it on and like you're wearing it for the day. Here is the poncho, which again, really cool with the snaps. Very practical way to make and wear one of those. And then this is really just kind of like a wider leg sweatpant. Separately, yeah, separately, I like them all together for her. Looks great. I just know I couldn't pull it off. But as always, a lot of design, a lot of style. That's what Mimi does. Okay, now we have a family of lounge shirts, cardigans, shorts, and joggers. Look at the cutie family. Neither of these kids belong to these people. <laughs> you can tell they're not a real family. Um, more like, I don't even know, I was going to say like neighbors. Um, but okay, so pajamas for the whole family. I kind of am digging the idea of a sweatpant and cardigan with a button-down shirt, though. I'd never considered that. And you also have the little short. Cute, right? I have all of these patterns individually, some way or another. Um, but this is the same guy that had the belted cardigan on, right? Let's see if they show him. There's the cardigan. There's his sweatpants, the shorts. The top oh that's cute okay so this is an unbelted like jacket cardigan now she's kind of looking like a doctor though boy my opinions are all over the place with this I I like a, I like him better without the belt I do think that that was causing some of my sort of like this isn't sitting right with me um but this one still doesn't feel great either. I think it's the the wider sleeve. I don't know. Uh, this is why I don't do menswear, you guys. Like, <laughs> it would be the worst. I don't know what guys look good in. I really don't. Thankfully, Dan is a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy, and we don't have to worry about much else. All right, here's the back. All right. And then... Men's pants. Okay. Again, I'm going to show you, but I'm not going to have a very good opinion about them. Versatile cargo pants. Oh, it's like cargo pants suiting. I mean, that's kind of cool. I wouldn't be upset if Dan and he showed up in those. He never would, but I can see those in like New York City for sure. Yeah, I can see lots of guys pulling those off. But see this cardigan? This is, yeah, this no belt, the sleeve is kind of fitted, right? Yeah, 
yeah, those are kind of fun. And then our last pattern is jackets and belt bags. Jacket, vest, hat, and crossbody bag. Jacket, vest, hat, and crossbody bag. How cute. Okay, first of all, I want the crossbody bag. I would buy this pattern just for that. I actually also would make the jacket. Look at this little slouchy hat. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I love the belt bag slung over the shoulder like this. Yeah, and the jacket's pretty cool too. How cute. Popping his hip and everything. Oh my gosh, little kids. Too much. Okay, so that seems to be it for Simplicity Winter. My overall kind of thoughts on this is it feels a little bit like a hodgepodge. Like, I'm not getting, like, winter. A lot of this stuff felt like spring and summer. Even, not just the colors that they chose, but also like the lightweight fabrics. Like I'm just not used to seeing that. Um, but there are some real standout moments here. The cutouts really are having a thing between that dress and this one. I love this sweater. You know, guys know I love those pants. I would be here for this. You know, just throwing that on. Eat, like to walk the dog or something. Very, very casual. Um, I liked this for her. These are the things like hours and hours from now that I will still be thinking about. And I'll go to Joanne like next week and I'll be like, ooh, I wonder if Simplicity's on sale because of those pants. This other stuff might be a little bit forgettable. Um, but I think that those pants will be stuck in my mind until I make them. And that's really kind of the bar that I'm setting for buying new patterns lately because I just have so many. Um, but if they were on sale, I'd also grab this sweater for sure. Um, and that would probably be it. I don't need any new coats or jackets. If I found like a super cheap fabric for this or found something in my stash that I didn't have another home for, or another plan for, this I think could be really simple and easy and, you know, just fun to have something like that in your collection. Anyways, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about the whole collection. Good, bad, ugly. Um, what you'll be getting on um, the next sale. Um, and like I said, as soon as I see more of the um, companies coming out with their winter collections, I'll be on here to share them with you guys. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye.